So guys, here comes the time to understand the concepts which I made you understand via the help of an example and that too in the form of a question. So it says the historical returns of two securities over the past five years are given. Calculate the covariance and correlation coefficient of the two securities. So guys, here is the table for you. Security one, the returns in percentage form is available for the next five years, one, two, five. So for the security one, the returns are as follows. It says 12, eight, seven, 14 and 16 from the year one to the year five. As far as security two is concerned, you got the returns in percentage form, which is 20%, 22%, 24%, 18% and finally 15% for the years 1, 2, 5. So this is what has been presented to us in the question. So we have been asked to finally get the solution for covariance and correlation coefficient. So now is the time to understand the concept and now is the time to implement that particular formula okay in order to derive your results okay in order to get those results you'll have to incorporate these formulas in your presentation so guys what's that formula which has been provided to us for covariance it's as simple as that which has been provided to you in the first part of the solution which is sigma return on security one less average return on security one okay multiply it with return on security two minus average return on security 2 whole divided by n minus 1 this is a formula for covariance okay now how do we go about the same okay i have made this particular uh, table of presentation okay i have segregated the same into five major parts number one is years number two what is the return are we expecting to receive from the company okay in percentage forms for both the securities security one and security two followed by the deviations how would i be able to calculate the deviations it's very simple whatever the return which has been provided to us in each of the year okay we just need to subtract the average return out of each year's return okay by that means i'll get my deviations part followed by product of deviations now whatever the kind of deviations that i'm uh, obtaining uh, and I'm uh, getting as my results in the third part I'll just have to multiply it with its consequent complementary stuff which is I just need to multiply the deviation for A with the deviation for B for A with B I'll get my deviation for A into B now then post that I just need to square those deviations okay what do I mean by squaring or deviation? You just need to square this part and this part. You'll get this figures and this figure. So, how do I calculate my first thing, which is my sum? So, for these five years, all I need to do is I just need to jot down my returns, which has been provided to me in my question itself 12, 8, 7, 14, and 16 for the year 1, 2, 5. Then for security number 2, 20, 22, 24, 18 and 15 for the year 1, 2, 5. Now, I just need to get the sum for these 5 years return. For security 1, it's 57. For security 2, it's 99. Okay. Now, 57 divided by 5, I get the average return which is 11.4. 99 divided by 5, I get the average return which is 19.8. Now, what all do I need to do is simple. I just need to subtract my average return from their respective returns. 12 minus 11.4, I get 0 0.6. 8 minus 11.4, I get minus 3.4. 7 minus 11.4, I get 4.4 negative. Again, 14 minus 11.4, I get 2.6. And 16 minus 11.4, I get 4.6. And on the similar lines, I just need to get the deviation for security 2 as well, which is 0 0.2, 2.2, 4.2, minus 1.8, and minus 4.8. Now, in order to obtain the product of deviations, you just need to multiply these two, these two, then these two, these two, and finally these two. And you'll get your figure as 
0 0.12 which comes out from 0 0.6 multiplied by 0 0.2 then comes 7.48 negative which comes from the figure of by multiplying 3.4 negative with 2.2 then comes 18.48 which comes out from the figures of multiplicating 4.4 uh, with 4.2 and then 2.6 multiplied by 1.8 you get a figure of minus 4.68 4.6 multiplied by negative 4.8 you get a figure of negative 22.08 in totality your product of deviations comes out to be minus 52.6 now coming to the last part which is squaring of the deviations you just need to square all of them one by one you get a figure of 0 0.36 then 11.56 19.36 6.76 23.04 in totality it comes out to be a figure of 61.08 and then Similarly, on the similar lines, you just need to square off the deviations for B and the results comes out to be these five and you get the sum total of 48.80. Now, in order to get the covariance, we've got the formula over here. We just need to implement it in order to get the result, which is nothing but these. Here are the deviations, guys. This deviation. How do I got to this figure? This pattern multiplied by this pattern so this pattern multiplied by this one i get these figures i just need to get the sum of it which is 52.6 negative divided by n minus 1 so n is the total number of years over here which is 5 5 minus 1 comes out to be 4 so minus 52.6 divided by 4 it comes out to be minus 13.15 now the situation comes in wherein i need to get the figure for standard deviation of return 1 and standard deviation for the return of security 2 so which comes out to be again this one this is the squaring of the deviations which is 61.08 and this one is the squaring of, of the deviations for b part which is 48.80 i just need to get them under the under root 61.08 divided by n minus 1 which comes out to be 4 so you get a figure of 3.91 as your standard deviation for the security 1 and for security 2, the standard deviation would be under root 48.80, which is this squaring of the deviations divided by n minus 1, which is 4. You get a figure of 3.49. Now, lastly, it has been asked from us that we need to provide them the correlation coefficient as well, which comes out to be with this particular formula, which is covariance divided by standard deviation of security 1 multiplied by standard deviation of security 2 so it comes out to be the figure of minus 13.15 divided by 3.91 multiplied by 3.49 and you get a figure of negative 0 0.96 and this is a perfect example to simplify your concept relating to covariance correlation coefficient and these things so guys, it's really imperative for you to understand, which I'm telling you again and again, that you need to basically retain the formula in your mind, okay? It is really good to understand the concepts. Understanding the concept really helps you up in grasping the particular knowledge area for any of the subjects. But then, in order to save time, it is really imperative for you to retain the formula because during your examination time, you can't really... Uh, get that much time so that you can drive the entire concept again in your mind and then get to the final formula so for that matter i would really recommend and i would really ask you to retain the formula in your mind because that is surely going to save your time during your c final examination i hope i'm clear with this particular stuff guys wonderful let's move towards the last topic of the day and that will be what do i mean by efficient market theory guys this is a word which says efficient okay how can a market be efficient i'll ask you guys how do you say that you are really efficient in your work okay efficiency comes out with what with timing okay there are two things one is efficiency another one is effectiveness people usually use these terms complementary why do they use this particular term as uh, as a complementary to each other because efficiency is something wherein you are doing some task in a very good timing okay you are really efficient with that particular timing effectiveness is something which comes out to be with accuracy with good accuracy 
I mean, you are not doing any kind of errors, okay? That is something relating to your accuracy. You are really accurate with your work, but at the same time, you are really efficient. That is with respect to your timing. So you are not just doing your work accurately, but at the same time, you are also doing it at a very fast pace, okay? So the person is really called as efficient and effective. In this theory as well, the efficient basically word is relating to the information, okay? Information about the market. How would I say that uh, the particular market is efficient? That's only if in case there is a very free flow of information and it's really fast, okay? You think about a situation of gaining uh, out of one of the arbitrage opportunities, okay? And by the time you think up, the information steadily revolves across the market, okay? And you don't even get that much time to tap in that opportunity, okay? So this is what the best form of market can be, okay? Wherein there is no form of arbitrage uh, possibilities, okay? But then that is something like really impossible because uh, even if the markets are really efficient today, but then this is certainly something which is just not possible as of now with the, the kind of current set of technology which is available in the world, okay? You're still getting some good opportunities to tap in the arbitrage opportunities so don't worry about it you'll get them uh, as long as uh, like the next 5 10 or maybe 20 years down the line because yes it's available but then efficiency with a particular market is basically said to be efficient only if in case there is a very free flow of information and market absorbs this information fully and quickly very quickly okay so that is what it's all about. There is a stock in the market which is really undervalued and you just got to know that the, the valuation of a particular security is really under, okay? It's not up to the mark. So what you'll do, you'll definitely buy it today itself because you're sure about this thing that tomorrow or maybe day after tomorrow down the line, this share is surely going to be going up because it is undervalued. Now, this information is available with you as well. But then this information is available with so many other people around. Once this information will start flowing, what's going to happen is this undervalued security is going to be purchased by so many people. Okay, it, many people will, will be like investing their money into the security. What will happen to the security? Then the price of the security will start going up, up, up and up. And then finally, it will stable at that position wherein there won't be any other buyer for that security. And then it's going to be like... Uh, at a very stable pace okay that won't rise much but then this information will be like spreading quickly in the market okay and that is why it's called as uh, the efficient market here and there is a very free flow of information and certainly the market is absorbing that information really quick so this is what efficient market theory is all about what all are the different assumption of efficient market theory number one that the information is really free and very quick to flow. Number two, all the investors have got that same access to information. You, me, anybody on this planet, okay? Every one of us are having the same access to information. Number three, transaction cost and taxes are not there, which is just not possible. Again, a very hypothetical assumption, but yes, most of the finance-based theories which were made uh, n number of years ago that were having a very similar point which is that there won't be any kind of transaction cost or any form of taxes which is just not possible in today's scenario but still this particular theory is also having this assumption then next comes in as the investors are rational okay we are very practical and certainly we will use this particular theory with for the best of our benefits okay we are rational enough so investors are rational that is number four number fifth is every investor has access to lending and borrowing at the same rate number six market prices absorbs the market information real quick so this was about the assumptions of emt i hope you're thorough with this particular theory as well now what's your task remember i'm leaving something for you by the end of conclusion of every video of mine which is you need to revise your topics don't forget that guys that is something which is really imperative for you if in case you have found this video informative if in case you have found this video really useful for yourself like share and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in my next presentation with a lot more topics to be covered up till then sayonara god bless you all bye